So my name's Scott, and I am a guitarist and a musician, and I play in bands and and also solo shows around town. But I run the studio here, Guitar Pit Studios, which I record bands. Um, actually, I record everybody from, I've had a cello, a, a celloist down here. I've had a person come uh, record an oboe audition for a symphony. Um, I've had bands, I've had everyone down here, sometimes just for rehearsal and writing sessions. I primarily teach down here though. Um, I have 28 or 29 students, including this one. And um, I teach all the instruments. I have ukulele, bass, uh, banjo, um, guitar of course, piano, drums. What else? Oh, I'm just started teaching the uh, lap steel guitar, the pedal steel guitar. Yeah, I just started that, got my first student last week on that. Um, so yeah, pretty much all around what you could think of that a studio might do, that's what I do down here. Um, what company sued uh, Ibanez? This was back in the 70s, Gibson sued them. Uh, so when they talk about lawsuit Ibanez, as they're talking about, um, Ibanez's that were made before, I think 77 is when the lawsuit was, somewhere around in there. Um, basically what happened was Gibson, uh, the Gibson Les Paul, um, Ibanez made a copy, just like about 30 other companies that were all making copies of Les Pauls. And um, the problem was that Ibanez, that actually the company, was called Ibanez and there was a subsidiary called Hoshino, I think was the name of it. Anyway, um, uh, their Ibanez guitars, uh, their Ibanez versions of the Les Pauls were super great quality. And um, they, so uh, they started, but they were selling about a third of the price of a regular Les Paul. And so all of the what they called dime store guitars back then, Woolworths sold like a version of Les Paul, and there was all kinds of these cheap uh, Les Paul. We'd call them Walmart guitars <laughs> nowadays, but yeah. back then, uh, affordable guitars, and they were all Les Paul copies. But Les Paul only went after Ibanez because of the quality, and they were starting to gain a lot of sales, and they were just as good or better in some cases. So. They tried to sue, they sued, and, and uh, they didn't get anywhere because there were so many other guitar companies that made Les Paul copies. Um, but they had to do something, and so they basically ended up winning the lawsuit by talking about the headstock, that Ibanez's headstock looked exactly like the Gibson model. So. Um, that's what they ended up getting them on, and so Ibanez changed the shape of the headstock a little bit, and it was over. Uh, but by that time, Ibanez started growing into a bigger company anyway and exploring on their own and, and being innovative as far as building guitars. So it didn't really hurt Ibanez, but they had to stop making the exact ones. So that's why they're so valuable. The pre-lawsuit guitars are valuable because the headstock is a certain way but they're all fantastic guitars. I wish I had one, so. So the reason that my favorite company, guitar company is Ibanez, there's a lot of reasons. Um, you know, I could say about the quality, you know, just from experience. Uh, but one thing I like about Ibanez is they're not afraid to take chances and maybe go outside of the box as far as what a guitar uh, might do or might be. Um, where's the one? Like this guitar, for instance. They're not afraid to try new things and experiment. This one with the with the pad. I'm sure you can see that.
and experiment with different technologies and try different things. They were the first to invent a seven string guitar. Um, so I like the fact that they're innovative and they're willing to try and explore. Doesn't always work, but that's okay. Um, and then I also like the fact that they will improve upon a design. They just won't stick with one. But they also won't abandon one that is awesome either. Uh, a good example of that is their, their Floyd Rose, uh, their locking tremolo system um, is based on a Floyd Rose. And, but they have their own and it's called the Edge Tremolo. And it's better than the Floyd Rose. And Floyd Rose invented it. In fact, if you look at this old one on my old guitar, it says licensed by Floyd Rose or licensed under Floyd Rose patents or something, Floyd Rose licensed tremolo. So instead of copying it like they did, they learned the lesson from Gibson, they uh, got permission from Floyd Rose. Can we build one using yours and we'll put, so they got licensed to do it. And those turned out to be better. So now when you go to buy a Floyd Rose, it costs you know a couple hundred dollars. And if you go try to buy just one of these, Edge Tremolo's on its own, it's about $300. So that's what has happened. So I like that. They'll, they'll take a design or they'll take an idea and they'll make it better even if, if it's theirs or if it's not theirs. So. <laughs> well, you know, I've, I really like the way Ibanez looks. Well, I like the way two of their guitars really look. I, lo I love just the look of this RG. That's my favorite brand, by the way, my favorite uh, uh, model of Ibanez, the RG. And basically, an RG, by the way, stands for, you ready for this? Rock guitar, right? And it's seriously, so RG. Um, the RG was designed from, basically from the uh, Fender Stratocaster idea. And Ibanez just rethought the whole thing and they made it easier to reach frets, or easier to reach up the neck by cut, making the cutaways deeper and the horns sharper. Um, my favorite thing about Ibanez guitars is the neck. These are like no other necks. Super thin, super easy to get to, super fast to play. Um, uh, but, you know, I, honestly, I just like the way Ibanez guitars look. I like the headstock design. I'm glad they got sued and changed it because I like I like this head, headstock design better. Um, but their quality and I think they're uh, now they're their own company. Their designs are unique, especially um, like their S series guitars. But their necks, for sure, definitely. So uh, Ibanez's most popular guitar that they make is definitely the RG series. Um, the second one is the S series, so we're talking about the RG series, meaning rock guitar. The S series, it's called S series because slim. Can you believe that? S series is slim, and uh, RG means rock guitar. But RG, and you just if you look at the sales and you look at all the artists that have endorsed guitars. Um, that mostly they're a variation of the RG, like the Steve Vai guitar, for instance. It's basically an RG with a handle cut out, um, and I think some modifications around here, but it's off the RG. Uh, although Joe Satriani has the S series guitar, he plays the slim guitar, but his is modified too. His his has a 24 fret uh, neck and think a deeper cutaway and some other things so it made it his own but mm -hmm. but definitely the RG I think it's the most versatile of all of them too um, for any style it looks the coolest <laughs> I don't know. well I think they I think uh, during that lawsuit period people were not just buying the guitars because they looked like a Les Paul and they were cheaper uh, like I said before, they were discovering that the quality was there, and it was uh, the craftsmanship was a lot more detailed and and uh, uh, just fine instruments, you know. So, 
uh, over time, I don't know if, the, if it was the designers or what, they went through some, some changes and they started trying to, instead of trying to copy the Fender Stratocaster or try to copy a, a Telecaster or something, they would take those, look at those designs and then develop their own. And that's where the RG, if you look at it, the, it, the first, I guess the first guitar that Ibanez, first, uh, I guess, rock guitar that they made was a Roadstar. And that's what the RG kind of came from. Um, it was a little more rounded here and fatter and uh, the neck was thicker. Um, but they continually, you know, modified it and designed it and then they stuck with this RG. Um, and so now, once they kind of found their footing, I think, um, in the, in the er early 80s, um, they were competing with some of the other sort of power rock guitar companies like Kramer and uh, Charvel or Jackson. They were all trying to make some of these really power guitars, you know, heavy electric guitars built for speed and, and uh, heavy playing. And uh, they found their niche there, and everybody just sort of started flocking to them. And I don't know if some of it had to do with Steve Vai, you know, take, taking and designing that gem to begin with. But, um, and people started maybe getting on the bandwagon. But I remember, this is when I started playing. Um, I remember playing, uh, I had a PV Vandenberg guitar, which was a fantastic guitar. It was a real thin neck and it was a, you know, a rock guitar. Um, and then uh, it was the first nice guitar that I, I got. And I joined, but then I joined a band. And, um, you know, I, my favorite artist was Joe Satriani and, and Steve Vai, both of them. And so uh, they both had Ibanez guitars. But I didn't I didn't know how much they were. I didn't think I could afford one. I didn't. I was broke, you know, 20 years old. So um, I joined my band, joined this band, the first real band where I made money, and uh, went out and played with this Vandenberg guitar. And it was a good guitar. I still wish I had it. But the other guitarist in the band, who was an old man, he was like 40. I thought he was really old. Oh, God. Uh, he said you gotta go out and get yourself a, a, a good guitar, a real guitar, if you're gonna play out and make money. And I'm like, this is a good guitar. He said, no. And he handed me one that was almost exactly like this. He said, you need one of these, and he handed it to me. And I was like, let me see this thing. And I'd like to say I did this, but I couldn't play like that. So I was like, I was probably like, But I knew I liked, I knew I really wanted that guitar. I was like, okay, where do I get one? And so he, he said, go to the rock shop in Springfield. I went to the rock shop and I didn't have any money. I had that Vandenberg guitar that wasn't worth much. And I had a bunch of junky little pedals that weren't worth anything. Some of them didn't even work. And I went in there and this guy, Sam, who owned the rock shop, it was just in a little house over on Jefferson Street. I said, I need to get an Ibanez. And he showed them to me. And I told him, you know, how much money I did not have. And he's like, and I, I still don't remember exactly how much this was. I think it was about 350 bucks, which back in the old days was a whole lot of money, whole lot of money. And I was like, oh, and I plugged this into a big Marshall stack there. And it was so beautiful and it was so awesome. and. I was like, I need to get this guitar. And he told me how much it was, and I had like $18 or something. So he let me, he took my guitar, my Vandenberg guitar, and those junky pedals. And I think I had a little practice amp, junk practice amp that I brought to. He took all that in trade with my little $18 and let me have this and the case. And I'll never forget it, you know, because Sam, he, he's passed away. Um, but he was that kind of guy at the rock shop. 
and everybody loves him in town. Every, every musician in central Illinois knows who Sam was, and uh, he's just that kind of guy, and he, he would really help out a new musician. And so he helped me out. So I And I have had this guitar, and this is probably one of the questions too. I have had this guitar for 28 years now. So this is another reason I like Ibanez so much. I've thrown this thing, you've heard this story before, back in the, in the 80s and 90s, you swung your guitar around your neck. And I swung this around my neck once, and the locking thing came out, and it went right through the kick drum of my drummer in the back. And it's, I mean, I've dropped it, I've kicked it, I've knocked it over, I've, and don't do that to your guitar, by the way. But this thing has cracks, and it's beat up, and still, all these guitars that I have, what I want to play every time is this one. So, there's another reason I like Gavin S. 28 years of abuse, and this guitar is still the best guitar that I own and probably will ever own. Um, so as far as quality, there are different levels of quality as far as the Ibanez brand goes, just like every other guitar brand um, in a way, but it's a little more nuanced, I think, than, nuance, word of the day. Uh, it's a little more nuanced than uh, uh, Fender or some of the other companies that just have the American and then they have the cheap China guitars. Um, Ibanez has four different plants that are running right now. Um, the top quality best craftsmanship guitars are called J Custom. It's, a, it's from the plant in California. Uh, there's a, a lot of videos you can watch. And as a matter of fact, when um, there's a video on Steve Vai's latest one that he designed called the Woody. And it's pretty cool. He goes in the California plant and he gets what sits down with the designers and they basically build his dream guitar, his next dream guitar, uh, right there. And it's pretty cool to see, you know. Um, so that's where you can get your custom guitars and your, you know, how you want them. And they're super, super expensive, but they're like handmade, detail quality, the best possible quality you can get. Um, so those are called J Customs, and that's in the California plant. Then uh, the next down, if you want to call it down, are called Prestige Guitars. And they are made in Japan at the Fujigen plant, I think. F-U-J-I-G-E-N -F is, is how it's uh, spelled. I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, but that's, that's the, that's the go-to. That's the plant that, that made the, I mean, originally back when it was Hoshino and they made those uh, Les Paul copies back in the 70s. And they made this guitar. And how you tell, this is another one of your quest questions, um, the back of the neck, this, my old one, I don't know. Can you see that at all? Kinda. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, um, there's a serial number on the back of the necks that tells you, uh, well, most of them tell you made in Japan, made in there's another plant in Indonesia, there's another plant in China, and there used to be a plant in Korea. And most of them say on the back where they're made, but not always. And you can tell by the serial number. This one, for example, says F blah, 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 blah. And the F stands for Fuji Jin plant. So, so that's the second best is the Japan. Um, the next tier down, they call them Premier, Premier guitars, Ibanez Premier, Premier line, and they're really good, they're in, made in Indonesia, and the quality of those guitars have, have gotten way better over the years, um, but, you know, they're, they're not as consistent, like if you order something in Japan, from a Japan, uh, any Japan guitar, 550, whatever RG, whatever kind of guitar you order, if you ordered one, and it arrived, and then you order uh, the exact one, and it arrived, they'd be the same. Like the same quality this, to the, you know, every precision, just, just like that. Indonesia, you know, one Indonesia guitar might feel 
the neck might feel a little different. Another one, you know, they use a little bit less expensive hardware. They use a little bit, I don't know, the quality stand control isn't as great in the Indonesia guitars, but they're still good. They're still good. And the Indonesia plant makes premier guitars, and they also make some, you know, some of the just standard RGs that are sort of mid-range uh, price-wise. So, for example, the J Custom guitars are going to be $8,000. The Prestige guitars from Japan are going to be anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000, something like that, maybe $4,000. And then Indonesia guitars, their top best premier guitars, probably $1,500. And they're lowest. They probably make some three hundred, four hundred dollar guitars. They're they're still good quality guitars, but they're, you know. And then the low, the lowest one are the China ones, and they are just, they're pretty. I mean, if I, if I, wanted somebody to have a good beginner guitar, and I had to choose between, you know, a Fender China guitar and a Gibson China guitar, which you know are like bolted to my walls outside. They're junk, you know. They're really bad. You can't even play on them. But and you had one. Mm -hmm. But yours was yours. Yours was we fixed yours up pretty good, but mm -hmm. not really. You know the frets cut you. It's just they're not good guitars. But an Ibanez, you know, a cheap China Ibanez would be better than any other China Ibanez. It sounds like I'm really biased, but I mean that's just the experience I've had with those brands. You know, I'll I'll try any guitar. I'll play any guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've had all kinds of them that you can, if you looked around the studio, there's lots of brands, but these Ibanez, these are, these are the ones I play all the time and especially this one. So, so yeah, I think that's the, the quality, uh, difference for a time they had a Korean plant and those some, you can, like, you can still buy, find some old Korean guitar or Ibanez, old meaning, you know, like nineties in the, in the nineties that are pretty good, but some of them are real junky. Their quality control was just, some were really good, some were really bad. That's why I think they don't make them in Korea anymore. But I think some of the knockoffs that you can that you buy, like I think, uh, you know, you can buy the fake, fake Ibanez guitars, fake this and fake that. I think they're, I think they're from the Korean plant. Like I think they, you know, some people are working in that plant still putting out Ibanez guitars, but not officially, you know what I mean? Because how can you mass produce fake Ibanez guitars exactly like Ibanez guitars without having a former Ibanez plant? That's just my conspiracy theory, I don't know. Nothing beats the old guitars though. The old, the old ones are the best. The serial number, that's another thing, if you type, it's cool about Ibanez, you can trace and find where every single Ibanez was made by looking at the serial number. You can type it in Google and there's this website. Just by the serial number, it'll tell you the year and the month and everything that it was made. So I've looked this up before, but I forgot. You know. Ibanez guitars, they come, they come set up, uh, well, if you were to order one from the plant or order one from Sweetwater or something, they come set up nice. But you always want to set your own guitar up. You know, wherever it comes from, you want to set it up yourself because setting up a guitar is like, um, uh, it's very personal, you know. Some people, I mean, you, you know how you like your guitar to feel. Mm -hmm. If it comes from the factory, it's not going to feel that way. It's going to feel like how they, it's not that they didn't set it up right, but, you know, tweak it and fix it. Like even whenever I have, if I take this to the rock shop and have them set it up, you know, and I pay them 75 bucks to do a setup. When I get it here, then I set it up again, you know, from, I still have to tweak it. So yeah, set, a general setup, yes, but you want to tweak it yourself and personalize it. And sometimes you find if you don't, if you aren't good at that or don't know how to do it, you find it, somebody at a shop that you like and they'll do it the way you want it every time. That's that's what I did for a long time before I learned how to do it myself. So yeah, and set up, you know, and it and it's it's different, you know, without going into a lot of detail about a floating tremolo and everything. Uh, 
you know, it's a combination of of lowering these and tightening tightening the truss rod inside here. The truss rod kind of bends part of the neck back, which lowers the string, and this lowers it, tightening these these springs back here. So it's a combination of kind of hit and miss until you find the sweet spot, you know. So, um, yeah, Ibanez, you know, they they make all kinds all kinds of guitars. Uh, and I don't have it in here, but I've got one that I play out live. You've seen it, that, and it's more of a jazz. It's a hollow body guitar. Um, but the cool thing is, you know, it doesn't look like a like your Gibson hollow bodies or your Fender hollow, hollow bodies. It looks like its own, you know, thing. And you've got one too, and mm -hmm. and they play nice and and they're versatile. Um, they've got their own tone, and and uh, you know, I can get several different. Nice sounds out of it. That hollow body guitar. But uh, so they make those, they make uh, they make a, a Les Paul type guitar. Um, they make some big fat hollow body guitars. They make acoustic guitars. Uh, they make a big range of acoustic guitars. Certain kinds, it might sound more like a Martin to more of a uh, classical sounding guitar. Uh, Steve Vai invented one of his own type acoustic guitars. That's expensive. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, there's a huge variety of, of Ibanez guitars. Now they've, you know, and, that, and that's the other thing. They'll make a, uh, they'll try some and then they'll, if it doesn't sell or if it's not good, they won't keep it. There's been some. There's been some uh, some duds for sure that I've seen and played, especially beginner guitars. They've had some, they've tried some shapes for beginners and they're just garbage. So, but yeah, there's there's quite a variety. I mean, Ibanez even makes mandolins, you know, and I and banjos. Gibson sued them for their banjos too, I think. I remember I remember looking at banjos about probably. 15 years ago and uh, couldn't figure out why the Ibanez banjos were just so expensive, the old ones. And they're just so ornate and so detailed and beautiful. And, oh, and it wasn't Gibson, it was Fender. Fender, I think, went after him for... No, I don't remember. It might have been Gibson. Gibson might have been on a roll back then. They're like, hey, Ibanez. I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah, they make every, every kind of uh, style of guitar for whatever kind of music. They even make a Telecaster style, so. But, you know, in my experience, and you can ask any of my musician friends, I can get any kind of sound out of this guitar. I can get the nicest, cleanest jazz sound out of this. Uh, I can get the, the honky-tonk country sound. I can get, uh, you know, the heaviest metal sound. I can get the bluesiest Stevie Ray Vaughan sound, whatever, I can get out, I'm, I can get it. Because, you know why? Because it sounds good without anything. This is electric guitar. You know, it's just, it, it resonates good, they're well built, they're good quality. And so, then the electronics are so nice, you can really get just about any kind of sound you want, so. I've played I've played a bunch of different basses, uh, and basses are an interesting animal anyway. But my oh, it's over there. I really like that that bass that I've got there, that Ergodyne one.
I've got that old Roadstar one in there that's really, really nice, a five string, and it's rare. Uh, it's old. It's really cool when it, they turn, they're white originally, and they start yellowing over, over time with the age. It's really, really cool. But they play nice, and again, it's kind of similar in a way. The neck is, is smaller, thinner, easier to play. Um, but it, but the basses have just this really rich, you know, deep sound that I like. But I, I mean, I like other basses too. I've played, I've played bass in a couple different bands, and um, in the one band that I'm in, Harmony Deep, I play bass on four or five songs, and we switch. You know, I hand him my guitar, and he'll hand me his bass, and he plays one of those. Oh, I forget what it is now. It's the it's shaped like a violin, like Paul McCartney from the Beatles mm -hmm. plays. And I play that. that. That's really nice. But if I had the Ibanez next to that one, I would grab the Ibanez. So they they make good good guitars though.